everyone. Welcome to the Future GDS Specialty Series. My name is Nick Saber. I'm the current Future GDS intern. I'm sure many of you have the same questions as I do when it comes into getting into a specialty program. For this episode, we have Dr. Carr, who is completing his oral and maxillofacial surgery residency at University of Texas Southwestern. Dr. Carr, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. So if you don't mind, would you please give us a brief summary about your journey to where you are today and how and when you knew that oral surgery was for you? Yeah, great question. So started out from a small town in Wisconsin called Mequon. I uh, did my undergrad at McAllister College in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. And during there, I was deciding between doing a PhD in organic chemistry versus uh, dental school slash oral surgery. And uh, my dad got me into oral surgery because he's an endodontist and right across the hall from him were uh, a group of oral surgeons that he had me shadow one day. And I just really liked that, you know, the pace in which they worked, um, the procedures they were doing, you know, implants, thermal sedations, and just kind of the overall attitude of the profession. You get in dentistry and in oral surgery a healthy balance between, you know, being a, a physician, being a doctor, but also having the lifestyle that, that you know, you'd have to support your family, your friends, and everything. So uh, I ended up taking the DAT late in my senior year of undergrad, and then I went out to the University of Pennsylvania uh, for dental school. And uh, from there, I always wanted to do oral surgery from day one. So I wasn't too big of a gunner, but uh, made it into residency and uh, having a good time down in Texas now. Nice. So who would you say is a good fit for oral surgery if they haven't considered it already? Yeah, great question. So I'd say, you know, uh, no matter what, it's usually gonna be a student that's like top of their dental school class, they're driven, they're motivated. Um, I think also, you know, helping each other out, helping out others, you know, always being like a source for knowledge, a source for, you know, comfort at times, because dental school is stressful. And I know uh, my career residents and the other oral surgery people that were in my class, they always have the very calm and cool collective demeanor, um, you know, in certain times of stress. But also, I think, you know, it's healthy to, you know, get out, play sports. You know, I played soccer and my co-resident and I just played, you know, 18 holes this morning. So, you know, there's there's that that release you need as well for, through sports, through, you know, having a beer at a bar, um, but also, you know, having a very, very driven mindset. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So in order to get to oral surgery, I'm sure uh, you have to take a couple exams, right, to be able to enter a residency. Yeah, so there's your uh, part one and part two of your dental boards. You have to pass those. Those are pass fail. And then there's a test that the oral surgery uh, applicants take called the Comprehensive Basic Science Exam. And what it does, it's supposed to mimic uh, the step one medical licensing exam that med students take. And uh, you essentially take half of that and you get a grade. And depending on if you want to go to a four year program or six year program, that grade may matter more or less depending on the program. Um, but they just kind of want a barometer to gauge you relative to each other, since there's no real national test to rate all the oral surgery applicants against each other. And also, if you want to go into a six-year program, which you need to get an MD with, they want to make sure that you're able to pass a med school curriculum. Mm, so that the importance of that score is relative. So it's more important for the six-year program. Yes and no. So I'd say. Um, it, some six-year programs have a cutoff that is at or below average of med school tests. Uh, other programs, they have a very high cutoff. So I think it really depends on the program you're applying to. But no matter what, it's kind of just a test that everyone has to take. And, you know, there's a certain cutoff that, you know, most programs have. Some might be higher than others, but it's, it's kind of a barometer to see how much time you're willing to put in to study for this test because the test is very difficult. Uh, and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and energy out of your regular dental school curriculum to do. So it, it's kind of just a gauge of how much you're kind of willing to put in to do well on it. Right. So, and how long did you spend studying for that? Like, did Penn Dental, like, did their curriculum help at all with taking the exam or was it all independent study? Yeah, great question. So my curriculum at Penn, uh, we, we had a lot of med school faculty teaching us, but we didn't take a med school curriculum. And I know my co-resident Nick, he went to Indiana University for dental school, and he also didn't have a lot of, you know, med school classes, whereas a couple of my other co-residents, he went to Columbia, and they essentially do the first two years of med school. Harvard, their dental school does the first two years of med school. So they, not necessarily a leg up, but they're more accustomed to the material. 
Mm, okay, so it would definitely help to go to like the dental school with the medical program incorporated into it if you're considering oral surgery, right? Could. Uh, it doesn't necessarily hurt, but you know, there are great applicants from all dental schools that apply to oral surgery. Uh, I know some dental schools are, you know, more, they have more applicants than others. Columbia is one, Penn's another, um, Harvard is another one. They, they kind of feed a lot of people into uh, oral surgery, mm. and but that's not like a, that's not a requirement to get in. So there, everyone kind of gets in from all different places and it, it really comes down to who you are as an applicant and, you know, what you do to get in. So I'm wondering why, so why do those schools uh, typically produce more like uh, special specialists? For example, um, did, did Penn have like that reputation or did it just prepare its students enough to like produce really high numbers? So when I applied to Penn, I interviewing and everything from what I talked to for faculty and other students, they had a very high specialty rate, I think, you know, over 50% of all the people in my class went into a specialty. Um, that's very high for dental school. Yeah. Uh, so I think some dental schools, they expose you to specialties as a way of like, you should do a specialty. They encourage you to do it. Um, that's not necessarily, they're not, they're not, not encouraging you for doing dentistry, but there's just kind of a mindset when you go to Penn, at least in my class that, you know, most people want to specialize. Mm -hmm. So, can you walk us through the typical life of a oral surgeon resident? Like, you know, what kind of procedures you do? What type of people you see? Yeah. So um, as an intern, my first year and Nick's first year, a lot of time was spent on call. Uh, you'd take call every fourth day. Um, usually it was facial trauma call. So you see everything from the head and neck, uh, like facial fractures, everything. So. You're going to the ED a lot. Um, you're doing procedures in clinic, like third molars, prosthetic surgery, so for like dentures. Uh, you're seeing a lot of trauma in the ED, so laceration repairs, cut repairs. Um, you operate a lot with like the fifth years and sixth years, uh, like the higher ups, the higher ups in the program. They're doing more of the more advanced procedures. Um, but right now, I'm in med school, so I have to take uh, Nick and I take 22 months in med school. Um, so right now we're on med school duty, so we get our Saturdays back pretty much. Um, nice. yeah. So are you, are you yourself in the four year or six year program? The Parkland and UT Southwest, you're in the program, uh, we're in, it's the six year program. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So you're going to get your MD as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So, and how would you say that, uh, that compares to dental school? Do you think you have more free time now as a resident? Um, I'd say in med school, there's a little bit more free time. Um, you know, a lot of the courses, so again, like we've taken the test that a lot of the med students take. Uh, we take it again as med students, mm -hmm. but a lot of the material we've seen uh, two times before this. So once in dental school, once studying for the CBSE, and then now a third time. So, and also most dental schools are not pass fail, whereas most med schools are pass fail. Okay. Gotcha. So, so, you, have, so you have a lot more free time and you can uh, enjoy other aspects of life. Yeah. So uh, Nick and I are involved with a lot of different research, um, but also at the same time, you know, Saturday morning we went golf, golfing, you know, so I think there's a, there's a healthy balance of being a resident. Um, and I think that's very important to figure out which program fits that and how you want to balance your life out as well. Cause I mean, otherwise you, you kind of just lose yourself a little bit if you don't have time for yourself to just relax. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure that oral surgery is a really competitive, you know, residency to get into. Uh, like how many students from your class at Penn applied to oral, just oral surgery? Yeah. So I think, I don't have the exact numbers, but I want to say approximately 15 applied and I think five got in. Um, I think this last year around 20 applied and like 15 to 19 got in. Don't quote me on the exact yeah. statistics, but, um, but yeah, yeah it seems really competitive. Right. Yeah. So I'd say overall getting into residency is more competitive, but I'd say out of all the applicants around 55% get in. Okay. So, and what do you think, like, what are the people that didn't get in on their first try? Like, what do you, what would you recommend to them to do? So they must be missing something from their application um, that would, that just stood out. So if you're getting interviews, then it comes down to personality because what, what residency really is, is a four to six year marriage. So you want to match up with the 
program, the people in the program, the culture of the program. And if you don't fit into that, that culture, you, you, they might not want you. Right. And that's neither your fault nor theirs. It's just different programs with different cultures. Um, I know a lot of people that got in, they were, they were doing what's called externships. So you go shadow programs for a bit. You're doing well on your tests. You're, you know, you're, you're eloquent. You can talk, you can hold a conversation. Um, you know, I think a lot of it's just being able to relax, smile and be able to communicate. I think communication is, is key uh, for interviewing and key in our field. That's what it comes down to really. Mm -hmm. So for the people who didn't get an interview, what factors do you think come into play and like what are the most important to work on? Yeah, I think uh, bo boosting the resume. So if you're lacking various you know, research, test scores, uh, maybe just overall like externship experience, you know, like they might think you're, you're deciding this at the end um, and, you know, on a whim. They want people who are committed. They don't want people who you know, decide one day, I want to be an oral surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, they want people that have really thought about it because the last thing a program wants is for a resident to drop out of the program or not make it to the program. That puts more stress on the other residents in the program and also the program director and the hospital itself. So they want people who are committed. So how did you show your commitment to the, to the field? Yeah, uh, I'd say CBSC, my test scores were great. Uh, I was very involved in research. I was very involved in like clubs at school. Uh, you know, there's oral surgery clubs, you can create your clubs. So I created an oral cancer club to raise like oral cancer awareness and learn more about it. Um, externships, so I, I externed at various different institutions and hospitals and various programs to get a gauge for which program I would really fit into, which program type I would like. So mm -hmm. those are kind of a lot of the main ways you can show your interest. So would you recommend focusing like on GPA and your CBSC test scores? Would you say those are the most important factors alongside the extracurriculars? Yeah, so the GPA and the test scores, that's what opens up the door. As soon as you like get into the interview, you know, at that point it comes down to personality and how you interview. But you know, there's like a, a bare minimum. You don't need to get like four O's, you don't need to be number one in your class by any means but you need to demonstrate that you are a good enough student, a good enough studier to, to warrant the interview. Definitely, okay. So, and yeah, cause I was wondering, cause I know Penn has a grade scale, but like some schools they're pass fail. So it's harder for them to distinguish themselves among their peers. But uh, I guess, would you say that then the test score becomes more important in that instance? Yeah, CBSC becomes more important and also then your externships, your research, shadowing experience. You have to demonstrate it in other ways besides test scores. Yep. So last question for you is, yeah. uh, for the pre-dance out there, like what would you recommend for them to get started? If, they're, if they know they want to pursue oral surgery, what would you recommend for them to do? Get into dental school first and foremost. So <laughs> the step number one is getting into dental school. It can't be an oral surgeon without getting into dental school. So doing well in your DATs, um, you know, finishing out college str strong. And then as soon as you get into dental school, uh, what it comes down to is that first semester, that first year, very difficult. You know, you're transitioning from, you know, an undergraduate to graduate kind of school, graduate kind of studying, you know. So uh, from there, you just kind of got to keep your head down, uh, work hard, you know. But at the same time, you know, make some time for yourself to have fun, whether that's working out, going to hang out with friends, you know, going to get a beer, watching sports, make sure you make time for yourself. It's all about a healthy balance. But, you know, that first year of dental school is very key in setting yourself up for a lot of success. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, so that'll be it for this episode. Dr. Carr, if anyone has any questions for you at all, uh, what's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah, you can uh, shoot me an email. I think you have it. You can distribute that. Also, phone number, you have that as well as well i you can text me shoot me an email i'm pretty open if i don't respond right away don't feel bad um just keep keep texting calling and or don't call but text or email me kind of link up okay awesome and i'll, I'll include that uh just uh, all those details in the description uh awesome. and yeah again we really do appreciate your time everyone if you haven't already make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and if you want to receive notifications for when we upload new content hit that notification bell. If you have any questions for us at Future DDS, make sure to DM us on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And until next time, we'll see you all then. See ya.